Well, you join me here on the allotment as the sun comes out. It's quite warm here today. There's a little breeze. It's cloudy, yes, but there seems to be an air of stillness. It's as if the allotment knows that autumn's on its way and winter's coming. And so it has to prepare itself for those coming months. It's fascinating. It is not as hurried, as bustling as the summer months seem to be. We still have a few roses coming, but the last of my tomatoes are being picked. And then the ground can be prepared for next season. And we'll be talking about how we do that on today's show. So sit back, relax, enjoy your cuppa, and I'll see you shortly in the next segment. This is a proud father moment, I think. Uh, <laughs> these are the some of the remaining tomatoes that I'm getting off the vines. And uh, well, there's a fair weight in here. And as I said already, you know, you buy these at the supermarket, but they're not as fresh. I mean, I know there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on there, but really, some of these have got a lot more than that. Yes, some are green at the ends, but they can be made into chutneys. The rest are gonna be chopped up and used in sauces. Add a bit of garlic, a few herbs, and then freeze them. And uh, you can continue to use them then throughout the rest of the season. You can actually as well, of course, put them in the oven, slow roast them, and then pop them into jars, into oil, and keep them throughout the next year, and use them that way as well. And that's such a good way of using your tomatoes. Some are starting to split. Now the ones that aren't actually starting to rot of course if they've only split today I can still use those because they're only going into a sauce and I'm only going to cut them in half anyway and uh, so we've got a couple that are starting to split mainly because I think this last week I've not watered them enough they have had some water but not enough and the green ones I say we can make into chutneys and things like that but I'm really really proud of my tomatoes this year and what's nice is actually and what I'm not about to find them but um I've got a variety here, look, that I grew last year, but I've not grown this year. But these have come from, obviously, a tomato that's dropped in the ground and I've just let it grow. And these are larger tomatoes, obviously, than the cherry ones. I remember last year, I think they were actually like a zebra pattern last year with stripes all over it. These aren't stripes, but maybe that's because they've been grown from a seed that just dropped onto the floor. Now. You can actually save some of these seeds for next year. It's really, really simple. All you have to do is uh, obviously cut them in half, take the seeds out, pop those into water and leave them for a little while, maybe a week or so, and they'll start to ferment. You think, oh, don't like that. Anyway, all you have to do then is wash them off, put them onto the kitchen roll and they'll dry off. And then you can save those seeds for next season. It's as simple as that. Um, really really simple and once they're dried obviously pop them in a the packet put the name on if you can remember what your tomatoes were and uh, you'll have them for next year you could actually if you wanted which some people do actually make a strip of this kitchen towel and place the tomato seeds along that strip and then when you come to next year you just put that strip in the ground and you grow your tomatoes from there if you wish oh i've really enjoyed my tomatoes and luckily my cucumbers are still going. Well, I have some sadness to report here on the allotment. My winter cabbages that I've popped in have been decimated, possibly by slugs, I would think. Um, so I'm going to have to put a slug barrier down. I've been down and ne never caught them, though, is the, obviously when I go to bed at night and things, they must come out then. So I'm going to utilise this. I'm going to make a new mix, and all it is is yeast and water and sugar and I'm going to make sure this goes around here to catch the slugs. Because of course, I don't mind slugs really, to tell you the truth. They are beneficial, they do eat things. The birds like them, of course. And um, well, I need some cabbages for winter and they must survive. So uh, yes, I'm on to the next stage. Funny enough though, the lettuce that I put in, I haven't touched that, not gone near the lettuces. And yet they've had a real go at the cabbage. Well, this one's not actually, so it's just these. So we'll keep an eye on those. 
um, and put some more in luckily because I've got lots more still into my greenhouse the slugs aren't going to win this one. Oh no if I've got to camp out here next to them I'm going to make sure that these survive I have to get some scours to put around them I'm going to try that trick thanks to Steve in Derbyshire because that's what you've been doing on yours and very successfully too oh I've got loads of eggshells I might try that trick too well as you can see I've cleared this area now and so it's ready actually to put those seeds on uh, that was going to give me some lovely uh, winter or well, overwintering uh, flowers which would then be cut back in the spring and then dug into the soil to have more nutrients in it I'm very excited um, in this patch I put in earlier in the year a beautiful absolutely stunning agapanthus it's got beautiful purpley blue flowers and uh, I first came across agapanthus when I was at Chatsworth House in Derbyshire and they've got the most immaculate gardens obviously but within the central area there is uh, in modern parlions where people think there's a maze and so a lot of people go to this area but the walls of the maze people don't realize were at one time the biggest man-made structure in the country and it was designed and, and had built by a chap called I say a chap I shouldn't call him a chap because he's an amazing engineer phenomenal entrepreneur and it called Sir Joseph Paxton he wasn't sir then just Joseph of Paxton and it was Chatsworth's youngest head gardener and he came up from London uh, it used to know the sixth Duke of Devonshire because he was a gardener at um, what was before I'm getting comfy now you see I'm telling the story what was before uh, the Royal Horticultural Society headquarters in London and uh, he bumped into the sixth Duke so the story tells one day as we were coming through one door into another uh, and they bumped into it and they famously rolled down an embankment started laughing and they got on really really well and that's how he became head gardener at Chatsworth he traveled up from London in fact the Duke gave him the money to come buy a coach and it was called the Comet coach and I think it had been used from London to Brighton and then they put it on from uh, London to Chesterfield and it was one of the fastest modes of transport at that time because of course the rails hadn't yet been invented or one well, may have been around a little bit or the ideas were coming but they hadn't been laid out across the country however it travelled at an astonishing, brace yourselves, eight miles an hour. Yes, eight miles an hour from London, unheard of. And of course, there were a couple of stops maybe on the way. And Joseph Pax actually arrived in Chesterfield at a very early morning, I think around four o'clock, and then got to Chatsworth on foot and climbed over the very famously the kitchen garden wall that there was then there, had a look round, and literally immediately set the workmen to work because they started very early in the morning and then went to the grand house and he actually went into of course to have breakfast at the kitchens he was invited in and that's where he met his future wife Sarah and from that moment on from the first day he fell in love with Sarah Paxton and uh, they got married and happily ever after amazing in fact Sarah Paxton was one of the strongest women that probably you'll ever know at that time because she actually while Paxton was away because he became ultra famous ultra busy in fact Charles Dickens once called him the, the busiest man in England she took over the running of uh, the gardens at Chatsworth House while her husband wasn't there isn't that amazing we hear very little there's very little written in history about what the women did it's all about the men but we know Sarah Paxton helped build what was as I said the largest man-made structure and I'm talking about the great conservatory at Chatsworth I put it off on that and it's called the stove because it was continuously fed it had it was a, it was a tropical house because at that time the idea was to bring all these plants back from around the world and uh, they had to have somewhere to put them so he designed this huge structure which actually led on to design of the um, the Crystal Palace for the 1950 exhibition in London and uh, there's lots of stories about Paxton I could go on about because he's just phenomenal and forgotten about which is actually a huge shame if you ever get a chance sit down and have a look at the life of Sir Joseph Paxton head gardener at Chatsworth House under the sixth Duke of Devonshire incredible anyway back to my agapanthus as I said the agapanthus surrounds the great stove and um, it's just a beautiful thing I bought this a lot smaller and the roots here are phenomenal here we go here's a picture I took earlier it's been in a, since February March time uh, maybe later than that 
and it's already put down some amazing roots so I'm going to water this area now and get it planted in and then we can look at making sure that the seeds go down for the winter mix. Well I'm doing some more tidying up here on the plot and uh, this is where next to my compost heap the a potato has just grown and I think it's an Albert rooster variety and some have grown on the surface here take a look at this picture uh, and so has any grown underground or has it just been here willy-nilly uh, well should we dig it up and find out here we go I put my sword, sword. <laughs> oh, here we go let's see oh here we go oh here we go oh oh yeah oh some dropped out over this side oh hey up hang on a minute oh, oh. well look at all that that is one wild potato um interestingly there are some potatoes come off it so i've got about six here probably oops i'll pick that up in a minute six or so in fact what i'll do is i'll um i'll stop the camera reset it and we'll do a close-up and i'll continue but this is a potato out of the ground already right how to do this without uh well losing the sun so there we are hopefully reset and i'm in shot um, i've got it here look there you go look at that there's some potatoes and a few more there oh there's another one i'll pick that up later now these are albert rooster variety so the red skin potato really good for mashing and uh well general potato actually so i've got one two about six here but look this is why they say never really allow potatoes to grow from a potato you haven't bought a seed potato because you get all of this vegetation almost as tall as i am in fact i reckon that's four foot of growth and not many potatoes at the end it doesn't really uh, so if you've got potatoes in try and get as many out as you can get and keep an eye for when they come start coming through and get those out too because it takes up a heck of an area for very little reward still though all for free and no to pay well i'm going to dig the hole through now and see if there's any more lying around and see whether they have actually gone into the soil but as you can see here the roots aren't that deep they haven't been earthed up but we do have a few potatoes oh bonus i suppose Before I leave this section on rogue potatoes, I found some more. These were inside my covered uh, greenhouse frame where I've got my sprouts and some cucumbers and, uh, well, my, my sacks actually of potatoes. And, uh, well, this one's done slightly better. I've got two here, but this plant, let me just put these away a moment. But this one here, look at the size of this again. And yet, it's only got one potato. Better than nothing, I suppose. But it just shows you that again look at all that lovely foliage but not very much at the end they take up a heck of a lot of space so get them out it's a day for collecting food and picking food here and uh, well we've had all sorts haven't we now we're looking at carrots and these are my main carrots here and uh, well they're a bit misshapen but once they've been washed and either chopped or sliced or however you like your carrots they'll be lovely absolutely delicious Oh, and they smell beautiful. Now these, I forgot to thin some out. So they're a little small and some have gone a bit green on the top, but I can still use them. These are the, um, obviously, <laughs> the round carrots because they're round, but they're nice. However, in this tray behind me, just a moment, these have been growing really nicely. Look at those proper round carrots. Isn't it exciting when you grow something new and different? These have been more of a success, really, even though they're only in a small tray. Um, they've grown as should, and they've been well watered and looked after. And these have been a bit rogue, as always. Uh, I've planted too many. I should have thinned them out, forgot all about them, because they're under cover. Just left them. But we've got carrots, and I can still use the ones that are in there. Just need to chop the green bits off. I love this time of year. And these, well, they're very nice greenery. But I think my uh, rabbit will love those, so we'll go and give some to the rabbit. Hmm. Well, as I said earlier, I've got plenty of cabbages left, and we've got some here, and there's one in this little pot here as well. So I can pop those out 
into the space that I need to. I've also got as well, look at that, cut and grow lettuce, isn't that fantastic? And also lettuces that are gonna be, uh, well on their own really, but there's mixed and very spicy. And I've got a couple, isn't it exciting, of the, of the, um, well, the red basil. So I'm looking forward to that. They'll be transplanted out very soon. I've got one <laughs> on here, bless it. One pepper, oh, sorry, one chilli, should I say, and that's gone red, and another one which is some green still on it. A real success story is my, um, well, look at this. This is my blueberry plant that I bought, and, uh, well, it was really, really dead when I had it, and it's been in here in the greenhouse. It obviously likes it. It was cut back, but it's got lots of growth on it, so I'm really looking forward to getting that outside uh, very soon and uh, hopefully it'll be safe over winter. Although having said that, I may keep it inside. That'd be quite nice, won't it? So why am I here? Well, it's rapidly, we're aiming towards the end of the show. And I hope you've enjoyed today's show and a little bit of the history. Now, Sarah Paxton, I was gonna put a photograph on and then I thought and realized, of course, that there's only one picture of Sarah Paxton that I can find in existence. Hopefully, this is it. And it's a drawing. It's not even a photograph, even though the photographs at the time, you can't find any pictures or photographs of Sarah Paxton. Isn't it unusual these days? But at that time, you see, she wasn't in charge, even though she was in charge all the time, really. But that's how it went then. So let's triumph Sarah Paxton, eh? For working brilliantly well on behalf of her husband at Chatsworth House, keeping all of those gardeners in check and making sure the great stove now i was on why was it called the great stove well it called the great stove because it had massive boilers underground over two miles of pipe work that went all the way around the great conservatory itself because it was a tropical house it was heated and uh, it had to be constantly fed fuel 24 hours a day isn't that magnificent and we'll talk more in the future about it and how it worked and what was in it but for now we'll leave paxton and sarah paxton alone and move on to well another new budding gardener and we go i say new you've been at it a few years but you've only just got your new allotment and you've sent me this video so let's pop across to wakefield and to darren and it's update so here we go hi jez it's darren uh, i just thought i'd give you an update on the allotment the last video i sent was 11th of july and since then i've been very busy as you can see i've built myself a couple of um compost heaps managed to get rid of all the brambles just uh, currently digging over a couple of sections here. That's already dug over underneath there. And over here, I've got my potatoes, the cabbages that you very kindly gave me, um, radishes that are ready to come up now. Uh, they're my lovely leeks and a few uh, beetroot at the bottom. And my pride and joy, the shed. So thanks for all the inspiration and keep up the great videos. Take care. Bye, Jez. Well done. Thank you ever so much for that update. It's a brilliant video. I love it. I love seeing what you're doing. It's fantastic. Now, I have an apology to make. Mr. Parton down in Loughborough has always been sending me updates and stuff. And uh, a few months ago, actually, he sent me this picture of his superb onions. So once again, thank you very much for watching Jeremy's Yorkshire Allotment Adventures. I really do appreciate all your comments and again had some fantastic ones this week and I will get round to answering the questions that people are asking as well. So I hopefully I'll see you next time here on the Yorkshire Allotment. Ta-ra for now. actually specialist flowers and uh